Hello, welcome to the Widgmo 5 webcast. So let's get started. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Chris Bannon. I'm the product manager here at Component One, a division of Grape City, uh, and I work on the HTML5 and JavaScript product lines uh, here at Component One. So today's webcast is uh, talking about our brand new product, Widgmo 5, uh, which is a new generation of JavaScript controls. So today we're going to look at the evolution of JavaScript uh, and the history of JavaScript uh, and its ecosystem. Uh, we're going to look at the introduction of HTML5. Uh, we're going to take a look at porting a Silverlight application to HTML5. Uh, and then we're going to take a more in-depth walk through some other Widgmo 5 samples. Uh, hopefully at the end we'll have some time for questions and answers. So let's take a step back here uh, and look at the history um, to get some context for where we are today. So here's a timeline that shows Microsoft's history. Uh, now Component One has been a Microsoft partner for a long time. So we've been developing tools uh, alongside these Microsoft platforms uh, since the early 90s. So Microsoft introduced in 1991 uh, Visual Basic which gave developers uh, a lot of tools. They introduced a concept of components, controls, uh, object-oriented programming. Um, they uh, had the concept where you could create properties, events, methods on a component or a control. Uh, and then uh, later comes the XAML stack where MVVM is introduced which is model view, view model. Uh, it's a development pattern where you can separate uh, your UI from your logic uh, and it's a, a really nice framework for uh, building applications in. Uh, and then comes uh, mobile which pretty much kills off uh, the Silverlight uh, and Microsoft Web story um, and a lot of .NET developers were just left hanging and didn't know what to do. So if we look uh, at how the JavaScript history parallels that, um, you can see that it, the web was created very early on, um, you know, when Microsoft was first creating these platforms. Uh, and it took a really long time before a component model came along, the first one really being jQuery UI. Um, around the same time, Silverlight was becoming popular. Uh, and then after that, there's just been a flood of new technology uh, and things have started moving really rapidly uh, to the point today where uh, the JavaScript ecosystem and platform, if you will, is on par with what we had in .NET. Uh, and if you look at how Component 1 parallels uh, this whole history, we first created uh, components on, in the early days of VB. Uh, we created the first version of Widgmo built on top of jQuery UI uh, sometime after jQuery UI released. We created a spreadsheet component uh, and today we're here to talk about Widgmo 5 leveraging all the latest and greatest technology. So we have the history or we have our context there in the timeline. Let's just quickly walk through that history of JavaScript. So uh, in 1990, the web is born. We have static HTML documents for uh, creating web pages. Uh, 1995, Netscape introduces JavaScript created by Brendan Eich. And this allowed us to create uh, dynamic web pages so it's it a scripting language uh, for the web. Uh, there were many problems across browsers uh, when using JavaScript, so jQuery comes along to solve those problems in 2005. Uh, then in 2008, a, a common UI component framework was created by jQuery, and that's called jQuery UI. Uh, and that introduced the concept of widgets. Um, so these are, these are UI components, but they're definitely not controls. Uh, it's a very specific syntax. So if we look at the syntax here, uh, you can see uh, it's quite simple to create a component. You use a jQuery selector. You call a function 
And optionally, you can pass in uh, any properties you want to set on that widget. Uh, where this widget pattern breaks down is working with properties and binding events. So if you look at the uh, bottom two lines of code, this is how you get and set properties using the jQuery UI widget factory. So what you do is you call that same uh, widget function. You pass in the first string uh, parameter being option, and that tells the widget factory that you want to set a property, or option is what they're called, uh, on that widget. And the second parameter you pass in is a string as well, and that is the property name that you want to set. Uh, and then if you're setting, or get, uh, instead of getting, uh, you pass in a third parameter, which is the actual value. So you can see here there is a lot of room for error. You could incorrectly uh, type the casing. You could misspell something. Uh, you're not going to get any type of error checking in a text editor. Uh, and you certainly would not get any auto-completion in a text editor. So that, the, the jQuery UI widget pattern was great um, for its time. Uh, and it, 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 the, this pattern is necessary for supporting uh, older browsers. So it was great, but we, we feel that now uh, that we have uh, new standards, there's better ways to do it. So between 2012 and 2014 has been really this flood of new technology. Uh, we have HTML5 becoming a real standard. Uh, we have ECMAScript 5 and soon ECMAScript 6 uh, being you know, a really capable language with property getters and setters and uh, new functions off of array. Uh, we have object-oriented programming patterns uh, like TypeScript that allow you to program uh, object-oriented uh, classes, modules, things like that, uh, and export them and compile them uh, to ECMAScript 5. And then we have MVVM frameworks. So we have AngularJS, we have KnockoutJS, and many more that allow us to have that familiar MVVM pattern in JavaScript. Uh, and then, you know, what's important to us is there's a component model now. So AngularJS has what's called directives, uh, which is essentially a component model uh, for building uh, UI components and reusable components uh, in JavaScript. So that's where Widgmo 5 comes in. Uh, it is our new generation of JavaScript controls. It focuses on modern browsers, uh, not legacy browsers. Uh, it is a single library for both desktop and mobile, so there's not different uh, scripts that you include for desktop versus mobile. Uh, they are actual controls. It's very important to note that these are not widgets. These are not jQuery UI widgets. These are true controls with real properties, methods, and events. Um, the properties are not functions, they're actual properties on the control object. They're written in TypeScript with modules, classes, and other uh, object-oriented concepts. Uh, and then the last thing we did here is we ported missing elements from .NET that we feel .NET developers uh, would appreciate and, and want to use in JavaScript. So uh, the eventing model uh, we borrowed from .NET, and then we also ported the entire collection view uh, from .NET so that uh, if you're building a Silverlight application or WPF application using collection view, you can easily migrate to HTML5 using the Widgmo collection view. So now that we have the, the history and context uh, of Widgmo 5, I'd like to officially welcome you to Widgmo 5. Widgmo 5 is touch first and mobile first, uh, and it has been from the start. The controls are optimized for all devices, um, both phones, tablets, and also desktops. The samples are also optimized for all devices. Uh, and Widgmo 5 is hybrid capable, so you can create hybrid mobile applications uh, by using Widgmo 5. Widgmo 5 is true JavaScript controls. I hit on this earlier, um, but it's really uh, a fundamental change in our product line where we uh, first created these jQuery UI widgets and now we've recognized uh, that the browsers are capable of creating real controls similar to what you had in .NET. 
The way we do that is we're leveraging ECMAScript 5. Uh, there's an API called object.defineProperty, and that allows us to create getters and setters for those properties so that you can directly assign a property like you would in .NET, uh, and the control can react to that. All the controls do have property methods and events, and again, these are not jQuery UI widgets. These are controls. Widget 5 is lightweight. It's also very fast. Uh, we focused on performance from the beginning. We target modern browsers, uh, so we don't have to make compromises for the legacy browsers. Um, we have a product if you need old browser support, and that's Widgmo 3. Uh, we're going to continue to develop that and grow that product as well. But we wanted something strictly focused uh, on modern browsers so we could create something um, that's really fast, really lightweight. It has no dependencies other than a very minimal dependency on jQuery. Uh, it's also very small in size compared to Widgmo 3 and compared to the competition. Widgmo 5 also has a flexible API. So if you're a Component 1 customer at all, or, or if you've been around in the early days of VB, uh, you will know what FlexGrid is. Uh, FlexGrid is a famous grid component that we first created in VB. Uh, it was so good, in fact, that Microsoft licensed it from us and included it in Visual Studio uh, as the official grid in Visual Basic. Uh, so this grid is really mature. Uh, it's been uh, matured uh, and evolved uh, since 1991. And the uh, FlexGrid is now officially available in JavaScript. So it is compatible with the XAML versions of the control. And at its core, FlexGrid has a philosophy. And that philosophy is that the basic features get built in uh, but anything complex uh, is done through our extensibility model. Uh, and our, our philosophy is that you should be able to do anything you want, add any features you want very easily, and everything should be extendable. Uh, so all, all of our controls are built this way, uh, and this, this philosophy comes from the FlexGrid itself. So what we do is we offer samples that show you how to extend uh, our controls to add the features that you want. Uh, and you can literally take the samples that we provide you and use them immediately in your application or extend them even further. Widgmo 5 also offers first-class AngularJS support. Uh, we've recognized Angular as uh, the leader right now uh, as far as MVVM uh, frameworks and JavaScript. Uh, and we also like it a lot. It, it feels very familiar if you're coming from a XAML background. Um, and it offers a really powerful component model to build upon. So we've been fully embracing it from the start. All of our samples were first created in Angular. Uh, we've also handwritten all of our Angular directives. And this is a different approach from Widgmo 3, uh, where we use kind of a factory pattern uh, to brute force all of our widgets into Angular directives. Uh, with Widgmo 5, we're handwriting them so that we can optimize each directive uh, so that it makes most sense for Angular context and also for the control itself. So uh, that's made a big difference in uh, the usability of these directives within Angular. So let's take a look at the Widgmo 5 architecture. Uh, we have a core which is a Widgmo JavaScript and CSS file. Uh, this contains our event model, collection view that we ported from .NET, our base control, a globalization utility that can be used to globalize your entire application, not just our controls, uh, but all of our controls do honor uh, the cultures that we provide. You can also create your own cultures and create your own uh, globalized and localized strings. We also provide uh, themes uh, and some, a core set of styles. Then we have our control modules. We have the grid module. We have the chart module that contains uh, multiple chart types as well as a, a unique pie chart and a donut chart. 
Uh, we have a gauge module that has linear, radial, and a bullet graph. We have an input module that has a lot of input controls like combo box, autocomplete, input number, input date, etc. cetera. Uh, and then we have more to come, obviously. Now you'll notice we don't have quite as many controls in Widgmo 5 as we do in Widgmo 3. And the reason being is we focused on high quality and not quantity. Uh, there's a lot of tools out there for simple UI like Bootstrap and we're fully embracing that so that we can focus on our core controls and really make them the best in the market. We also have an optional module which is our Angular Interop. Uh, we've really put a lot of work into Angular support uh, but again it is optional. So if you want to use our built-in directives uh, you just simply include this and you can start uh, using the Widgmo directives in your Angular, Angular applications. So let's take a look at porting applications from Silverlight to HTML5. We have a lot of customers that have been working in .NET, they've been working in WPF or Silverlight, and migration is really important for them. So Microsoft kind of dropped Silverlight uh, you know, when mobile uh, kind of killed it, if you will, uh, because no modern mobile devices were supporting the plugin, but the problem was that they didn't offer any migration path. So a lot of developers uh, were left wondering where to go, uh, especially in the JavaScript ecosystem, and that's why we see a lot of them moving to AngularJS, uh, which is a Google product. So Widgmo 5 tries to make migration uh, of these MVVM apps uh, relatively easily. The steps are porting the view model using collection view, assuming that you're using collection view in .NET, uh, and then port the view using the Widgmo 5 controls in place of any .NET controls you have. So let's take a look at a quick example of migrating one of these applications. Uh, we're actually going to take a sample from Microsoft. So this is the Data Services Quick Start from MSDN. Uh, this is one of Microsoft's uh, pretty simple Silverlight sample applications uh, working with data services. Uh, it loads data with Silverlight data services, uh, which are, calls a web service and populates collection views. Uh, and then it handles selection and hierarchical data uh, in the UI so you can select customers, view orders for per customer and then view order details per order. Uh, and then there's uh, controls bound to it like the combo box, some input controls uh, and a data grid. So let's take a look at that application running in the browser. So here we are, we're actually on MSDN so this is not our sample, this is Microsoft. So we wanted to truly take someone else's Silverlight application uh, and port it to HTML5 to truly test our, our theory. So uh, if we hit start here, it's going to populate the collection views. If we look below, you can see the queries being made to the web service on odata.org. Uh, it's loading in data from the Northwind uh, database. And you can see I can choose a customer by choosing a customer, I get a list of all orders associated with that customer. By changing the order, I can see the different uh, order details uh, per order. So pretty basic application, uh, but you know it handles a good scenario, which is a relational database, uh, selection, and a hierarchical structure in the UI. So how do we do this? Uh, so we have a collection view objects uh, that we need to create for uh, customers orders and details and then we need to load some data using Ajax instead of uh, Silverlight data services. So if we look at the Silverlight code example below uh, we're creating a new collection view uh, of customers. Uh, we're creating our data context uh, and pointing it to the web service URL. Uh, then we're uh, creating the query uh, which is our customer's query, uh, and then we're loading that data asynchronously. Pretty straightforward code. Now if we look at the uh, HTML5 version, 
This is an Angular application, so that's why we have this scope uh, object that we're adding a property to. So we're creating a new collection view. It's a Widgmo collection view uh, called customers. Uh, and then we're calling load data. And load data simply takes, makes an Ajax request to that same uh, URL. Uh, and then it takes the results and populates the collection view with them. So that was our view model. Uh, we were able to have uh, almost the same code between uh, .NET and JavaScript working with the same uh, API. Now we're porting the view. So we need to use uh, some AngularJS directives in place of Silverlight controls uh, here and hopefully bind them to the same things. So we have a combo box. Uh, that has an item source property bound to the customer's collection view. We have a display member path property bound to company name within that collection view. Uh, then below that we have a data grid uh, that has the same item source property bound to uh, details for orders. And we are also defining a column within that grid that is bound to the product ID uh, of the order details. Now let's take a look at the HTML5 version. So this is using the Widgmo combo box uh, directive. And you'll notice the same property names that you have in .NET. So we have item source property bound to customers. We have display member path property bound to company name. Uh, and below that, we have our flex grid control. Also, item source property bound to details. Uh, and we're creating a grid column bound to product ID. Uh, another nice little touch we have, you'll notice that we have a width property set that also uses star sizing, just like you have in uh, XAML. So you, you can see the uh, similarities between this code, uh, slightly different syntax, and the, the HTML5 version is a little bit cleaner uh, binding syntax, and that's thanks to AngularJS. So the results, uh, porting this application took about two hours. Uh, and now runs on desktop and mobile devices. Uh, it has an adaptive layout that renders well on small screens. It is pure MVVM. Uh, and one of the coolest parts is it's now about 15% the size of the original sample. So uh, this entire application is now 160K uh, versus the Silverlight version being uh, over 1 meg. So let's take a look at what we ended up with. So you can see it's a similar layout. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Now notice I'm loading data again from odata.org. I'm calling the same services. And this is probably one of the, the key benefits uh, during this port is we were able to use the same backend, same web services, and simply swap out the client. So now we're using a JavaScript client instead of a Silverlight client. I can do the same functionality here where I can choose customer. It loads in all the orders for the customers or for that selected customer. Uh, and by choosing an order, I can view the order details. So it's very simple, uh, but this porting this application was very easy uh, because we had the collection view and because we had the controls similar that to what we had in .NET. And again, we didn't have to change any of the backend services. It's possible to port Silverlight applications, but that is not um, what Widgmo 5 uh, is limited to. Uh, you can build any type of JavaScript application or HTML5 application with Widgmo 5. You don't have to just be porting Silverlight applications. Uh, it just happens to be very easy to port Silverlight applications using Widgmo 5. Um, we've kept Widgmo 5 to be unopinionated, so it will integrate very naturally with any other JavaScript libraries as well. Uh, we have full support for AngularJS that we provide. Uh, Widgmo 5 works in Knockout, and we will have full support for that soon. Uh, we play nicely with Bootstrap. Our default theme uh, matches up with Bootstrap 3. 
we also work well in the Ionic framework. Uh, we can integrate with Firebase, uh, Breeze.js, and pretty much any other. Uh, it's Widgmo 5 is uh, very flexible uh, when working in other application environments. So let's take a look at some of these uh, other integration samples. The first sample you'll probably want to walk through is the Widgmo 5 Explorer. Uh, this application is kind of the kitchen sink that shows all of our controls and a lot of the features uh, that they're capable of. You can also learn how to do things uh, like working with our globalization API, uh, working with the collection view itself uh, outside the context of our controls, or you can browse through all of our controls uh, and play with them, set properties on them, uh, just to see what they're capable of. We have our grid, charts, all the different chart types, our pie chart, gauges, and more. I'd really encourage you uh, to spend some time uh, walking through this uh, and learning uh, the capabilities of Widgmo 5. I'm not going to walk through everything here, uh, but this is a great resource if you want to understand all the capabilities of Widgmo 5. Now what we have here is actually a hybrid application. Uh, this is built with Ionic. This is a simple expense tracker application. Uh, I am running it in browser because it's a hybrid app, so it's HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, um, and it's capable of running in a browser as well. Um, but yes, it's, it's meant to be deployed on a mobile device as an application. Uh, so we have a simple chart here that displays our expenses by category. Uh, I can choose a category uh, that, and then inside that category see a listing of all the transactions. We can go back to my overview, try another category. We also have a details grid here. So say you want to get all that information condensed down uh, into a smaller size. You can do that using the flex grid, and you'll notice it works really well on mobile. Um, we can also do things like sorting by the amount. Uh, so if we want to sort our transactions, it's quite easy to do. So that's a very simple sample of using Widgmo 5 in Ionic. Uh, Ionic uses AngularJS uh, and really embraces directives, uh, so all the UI components can be built and put together as directives in, in markup, which is really nice. So all you have to do is include Widgmo 5, and you can start using our directives right inside of Ionic, and it's, it's really nice. Uh, we really like Ionic here. Uh, and we will be making more samples of using Ionic and Widgmo 5 together. Another uh, cool technology right now is Firebase. Firebase is essentially a, a real-time communication uh, <clears throat> with a database, and all the clients can be synchronized. So I have two windows open here, uh, and let's say I... Uh, change a value, you can see immediately uh, that value changes in my other window as well. So that's actually going to the server, and that server is synchronizing those clients, which is nice. And Firebase does all that for you. So it's something a lot of uh, people are interested in right now for doing you know, real-time development. Uh, and we have this sample that shows how to integrate Widgmo 5 with Firebase. So the way we built this sample is we created a, widget, or a Firebase collection view. Uh, since we have the iCollectionView interface, uh, you can write your own collection views so that it's very easy to data bind all the controls. Uh, in fact, we did that. So we created a Firebase collection view. We provided in this sample, and you can use that collection view uh, yourself in your own applications with Firebase. Similarly, we did that for Breeze.js. 
We took this sample from the Breeze.js website. Uh, it also uses the Northwind database. So I can click to load in customers. You'll see that it's fetching customers from the database. I can select a customer in the grid and it loads their details in on the right. I can page through. And it's fetching more data from the server. Now this is, this is really cool um, because again, we're able to create a breeze collection view uh, very easily. So we, we do provide that breeze collection view so you can take that and you can use it to data bind in your applications if you're working with breeze.js. Just show you another UI here. Uh, again, this is all just bound to our collection view implementation, uh, which is the breeze collection view. Now let's take a look at some performance. We really strongly believe that there's three things that make a good product, and that is performance, features, and uh, good support. Uh, so we spend a lot of time on performance uh, from the beginning. Everything has to be fast. And it's, it's not enough to just be fast. You have to be fast, and you have to uh, do and implement the features correctly. It has to be functional and fast. Uh, and then, of course, uh, that product needs supported um, well. Now, uh, we have 500 items. I'm going to take it up to 50,000 items just to, you know, push the limits of these controls. Loading in FlexGrid, the Widgmo grid. This is the Widgmo 3 grid. Spread.js, which is our spreadsheet component. Slick grid and some competing grids in the market. Some take a little longer than the others. And then the open source uh, Angular grid. So you can see uh, we're, we're not always the fastest, but we are very fast. Uh, and it's, it's not just important to be fast. The features are important, too. So you'll notice that we support selection really well. You can scroll with selection. You can use keyboard support to navigate. I can scroll with keyboard support. I can even select with keyboard support. These things make the grid feel natural, just like it's in a desktop environment. It, it is a, a grid like you would find uh, in any operating system. Now, if we look at some of the others, and test some of these same features, you'll see that uh, sometimes they can be a little strange. Um, you can't do scroll selection. You can only select what's in the UI itself. Uh, if I try to navigate with keyboard, this selection doesn't honor it. I can move up into the header with selection. And if I try to scroll with the keyboard, it just scrolls off screen. These are just the little things that really matter uh, and, and need to be done right. And then sometimes the grids don't support selection or, or keyboard navigation uh, at all. All right, let's bump it down to 5,000 and take a look at some charts. So load in the flex chart, the Widgmo 3 chart. and then some competing uh, charts in the market. And some open source charts as well. Again, you can see um, where speed and performance is really important here. Uh, and it, it, your grid and chart have to be able to handle a decent amount of load. They have to be able to handle a lot of records, uh, especially today when you're sending a lot of data down to the client. Um, so you can see how important it is to us. Uh, this sample uh, is available in our evaluation download. So if this seems like hocus pocus stuff here, 
I highly recommend you download and try it yourself and you can see that you know this is just really basic stuff where we're data binding uh, arrays to these grids and charts to see how they perform. All right. So let's move on to the last sample here, uh, which is our 101 samples. Uh, now this one specifically is for FlexGrid, uh, but we have these 101 samples for all the controls. Uh, and these are some of my favorite samples because it's a really great way to get started. So when you're ready to start building applications with Widgmo 5, I highly recommend you use these 101 samples to walk you through doing that. So what they do is they break it down into simple steps uh, of what you need to include, the, any markup you need, any JavaScript you need, and any CSS you might want to use uh, to create uh, grids or any other component for that matter. Uh, so it walks you through all these different scenarios, uh, you know, creating columns, uh, setting the selection mode, working with different selection modes, editing, grouping, uh, and it gives you a really nice step-by-step -step guide of, of how to create uh, different grids for different scenarios. Uh, and it also kind of tells you why you're setting things or why not to set things. So very useful. I highly recommend checking the 101 samples out. Uh, you'll notice this one's using Angular. We do have Angular and just plain JavaScript versions of all these 101 samples for you to use. So that's on widgmo.com slash five. You can get to all these demos. So uh, to conclude here, we have just shown you Widgmo 5. Uh, and Widgmo 5 is not just a, a new set of controls. It's a new generation. Uh, it is completely unique in the market. Uh, it is the first set of true JavaScript controls where we've stepped back, decided it's time to break away from widgets, which is what every other uh, JavaScript product offers. And it's time to create controls, just like we have in .NET. Widgmo 5 is faster, smaller, and less opinionated, and that's because we targeted modern browsers. It's easier to learn and easier to use than Widgmo 3. Uh, and it also leverages the 20 years of control development and experience we have at Component 1. Uh, we've taken everything we've learned from VB1 uh, all the way through uh, Windows RT, and we've applied that now to Widgmo 5 to create these controls that are going to feel familiar to .NET developers, and they're going to feel like very high quality controls to JavaScript developers. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you take some time to visit widgmo.com slash five um, and definitely download, try out the evaluation, um, you know, give it a test, definitely test that benchmark sample out to test performance, uh, walk through the Explorer to test the features. Uh, and I, I really uh, am happy to welcome you to Widgmo 5. Now let's take some we had a question on whether or not we were going to be doing a white paper on porting WinForms to Widgmo 5. Okay, Another? so uh, yeah, the question is about uh, uh, porting WinForms to HTML5. That's a great question. Uh, and yes, we will put something together. I think uh, we could take a uh, WinForms sample application and actually migrate it um, so we can understand that uh, how that goes, and then we can, you know, do the same thing and, and teach you how we did it uh, and compare and contrast the, the two versions just like we did with Silverlight. So, yeah, we would definitely do that, and that's, that's a great idea. Um, somebody had a question about, we had two questions about the data services uh, sample. Yes. Um, the tab was loading nonstop. Um, I didn't know if that was a bug. Uh, yeah, that that I believe that's because it's looking for a, 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 a mapped JavaScript file. Um, there's there's a JS map file. It's looking for jQuery. Let, let me confirm that. I don't believe that's a bug, but let's check and see in our network here what's hanging. Yeah, I see it's looking for that jQuery.min map. Um, so that's that's a mapping to the source file. Uh, there's there's a way to fix that, and we'll we'll address that in our sample. But 
there's, there's certainly nothing um, hanging or anything wrong with that sample. But that's a good thing to point out. Uh, we had a question about licensing. Uh, do you plan to provide GPL uh, license support? Good question. Uh, Neil, at this time, uh, Widgmo 5 is purely a commercial product. We don't have GPL licensing. Um, the Widgmo 3 stuff is GPL licensed. Um, so that, that would probably be the best bet for uh, doing any kind of open source development with Widgmo. Uh, we had a few questions. Uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more about what you mean when you say modern browsers, um, what versions of IE, uh, things like this. Yes, that's another great question. So the minimum browser support that we have is IE9. Um, and you know, previously we had supported IE6 and above. Uh, and the reason we chose IE9 is ECMAScript 5. So any browser that supports ECMAScript 5 supports Widgmo 5. Uh, that's another reason we named it Widgmo 5. So, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, let's see, any, any, anything modern from Firefox, Safari, Chrome within the last four years, uh, I believe they've had support for uh, object.define property. Uh, and then, yeah, IE9 uh, as far as IE. That's pretty much the, the lowest common denominator there is IE9. And uh, Chris, we, had, we were talking a lot about .NET, uh, WinForm, Silverlight. Uh, we had some questions about what type of IDE um, we recommend or if there's any requirements on that front, um, what type of front-end development requirements people will be needing. Yeah, so there's no requirements, um, but you know, we, we, we do have a big Microsoft background, obviously. So we develop using Visual Studio. Uh, we also uh, offer uh, Visual Studio solutions and projects for all of our samples, which is cool. So you can download the evaluation and open up you know, that Explorer sample as a Visual Studio project. So if you're a .NET developer, you'll feel right at home. It's not a requirement, however. They're just HTML and JavaScript applications, so you can also open them up in any kind of text editor and just run them in the browser. Uh, another uh, nice thing we didn't cover today is that we offer Visual Studio project templates. So when you download our evaluation, there is a V6 installer. You can install that so that then you can go to File, New Project in Visual Studio and you'll get Widgmo 5 as an option. And we have Angular uh, project template and then just a plain JavaScript uh, project template and that includes all the references you need and the in the angular it gives you kind of like that you know the shell of an application to start with uh, we had another question here uh, we talked a little bit about MVVM um, what about mixing which mode controls with jQuery mobile in an MVC project mm. yeah that that should work fine we're not leveraging or using any of the other libraries out there so we won't interfere with them either uh, everything is namespaced under Widgmo, uh, and, and beyond that, everything's in its own module within Widgmo, so it won't interfere with uh, other stuff. Uh, you know, other theming frameworks might impact some of our controls, like if uh, jQuery UI is styling buttons a certain way, it might look kind of funky uh, in our controls, but it might not. We just haven't tried that. Uh, it should be quite possible. You know, if there are any issues, we'll be happy to look at them. We did have a just just a quick question about if Angular JS we consider it a dependency. No, it is not a dependency. That's really important to note. Uh, we we do like Angular a lot here, and we use it a lot here, but it is not a dependency. You do you do not need Angular JS to use Widgmo five. You can use Knockout. You can use Ember. You can use uh, Backbone, whatever you want, uh, you can you could use nothing. Uh, we just need a browser, and our controls can be used. Uh, now, obviously, you won't use the Angular uh, directives if you're not using Angular, uh, and you would use the JavaScript API to create new instances of our controls. And essentially, you'd follow the uh, plain JavaScript uh, getting started guides if you want to do that. So, uh, I really appreciate everyone coming. Uh, I couldn't be happier to launch this product. 
Uh, it is such a high quality product. I could not be more proud of it. Um, it, it, it. It stands up against all the best controls we've built in Silverlight and .NET, uh, and it, I'm so happy that we can now provide that to developers in JavaScript. Um, and you know, from, from me personally, working uh, in this industry, working in JavaScript uh, for a long time, you know, it, uh, I think it truly is a, a new generation uh, and it is a paradigm shift in UI components and, and I'm again really proud of this. So thanks a lot guys. Uh, go ahead to widgmo.com slash five uh, and have a great day.